everyone. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Sandra Schmerler Foundation Telethon. I'm Claire. Hi. She's Sabine. Um, we just wrapped up Draw 5 on TSN. Um, Alberta and Team Laura Walker got the win over Northern Ontario. And Alberta now improves to 3-0. They're the only team with a perfect record at the Scotties, while Northern Ontario falls to 1-1. One and one. and um, later this afternoon, we're going to have PEI and Suzanne Burt up against Quebec and Laurie St. George. Um, and of course, we're, we're doing a lot of fundraising today. It's all about neonatal intensive care units. And Sabine, both of these provinces that we're gonna see playing this afternoon, PEI, Quebec, they've already seen so many effects, positive effects from the Sandra Schmuller Foundation. That's right. Um, taking a look at some of those provinces, Quebec, we've seen them nearly $400,000 uh, has, has helped Quebec. And then heading into the Maritimes, $480,000 is what uh, the Maritimes have seen. And that's including a grant uh, received by Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Charlottetown. So those are just a few uh, numbers that we're looking at and just a couple of provinces when we're seeing all of the country that uh, this foundation helps. And like the Scotties, we're competitive here. We've set a target of raising $500,000 today. That's up last year, $450,000 were raised in Moose Jaw. So we've set the bar a little bit higher. We do have an update right now at just 1230. We're already up to $147,000, which is unbelievable. So keep calling that phone number. Um, keep, keep getting virtual with us. Come onto our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, you name it. There's lots of ways to donate. Um, and, and we've got volunteers just behind this wall here in Regina and all across Canada. That's right. So we have volunteers answering phones, uh, as Claire has mentioned. Uh, again, all in a safe distance following all of the guidelines that uh, we have put out for everyone across the country. Um, and again, we want to be sure that everyone is aware that the number is 1-866-210-6011. Of course, you can also choose to donate online at sandrashmurler.org. We want to also point out that we have a number of volunteers at home uh, using the net to phone system as well. So we've had a lot of uh, you know, different ways that we have people helping out as volunteers, answering phones, taking donations from all of you. And again, a uh, huge thank you to all of you who have been donating so far. And if you do get a hold message, if you're calling in, I just uh, am asking you to please just stay on the line or again, choose the option of donating online so you don't have to be stuck on the phone. Um, you know, we have a number across the, pro uh, across the country that are answering phones, but sometimes get a little stuck on a conversation. <laughs> and you know, we've mentioned social media a few times, the yes. hashtags, champion start small is what you can use on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We actually have a live Facebook feed right in front of Sabine and yes. I. And so we're gonna engage with you, Pam and Weston, we see that you're watching. Um, let us know where you're watching from, where you're tuning in from, where you've donated from. We'd love to shout you out on the show today. Um, and like we mentioned, we've got lots of volunteers just right here in Regina. We've got about five in the other room. Um, I was in there a few minutes ago, phones are just off the hook. It's like you can't even get a conversation in with any of the volunteers before the phone's ringing again. We've got Ottawa is volunteering, Kelowna, Calgary, and even in the bubble in Calgary, Team Anderson, they're not playing today. That's Saskatchewan's team at the Scotties. They're going to be phoning um, and helping us out on the lines as well. So if you phone in, you might even get to talk to Sherry Anderson, making her 10th Scotties appearance. And also, obviously, we uh, sp spoke to them earlier this morning, uh, Sarah, Jenna, and Grandmama Shirley uh, answering phones as well. So you could luck out possibly and have one of them answer the phones uh, if you are calling in as and well. And Jean, tuning in from Three Hills, Alberta. I love it. We're, this is just, what's so amazing about the Sandra Schmurler Foundation is it's across Canada. And yeah. Sabine mentioning earlier just how many contributions have gone to the Maritimes, to Quebec, Right here in Saskatchewan, there's been almost a million dollars worth from the Sandra Schmurler Organization Foundation, pardon me, that has gone to help neonatal intensive care units right here in the province. And um, we're going to hear from a lot of guests this afternoon on how that's directly impacted them and where this money goes. And also, real quick, again, if you are engaging with us on social media, uh, you can find us all on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, Sandra Schmurler. Uh, is the handle that you're looking for and of course the hashtag is champions start small we're gonna actually introduce a video now yeah and it's about the Johnson family they've got twin girls Scotty and Mercer and these those girls have experienced multiple trips 
to the NICU and Children's Hospital in both Edmonton at the Stollery and the Royal University Hospital NICU in Saskatoon. Now parents Lisa and Evan Johnson knew Mercer would have to be immediately sent to the NICU because she would be born with a heart condition. Take a look. Today I'd like to welcome Evan, Lisa, Aubrey, Scotty and Mercer Johnson. They are here today to share their story of Mercer's time spent in the NICU. Can you please introduce us to your family? I'm Evan. Uh, this is my wife, Lisa. Hello. And this is Aubrey. Hello. Aubrey is five and a half years old. And these are the twins. And this is Scotty <laughs> <laughs> and Mercer, our Evan. little warrior. Awesome. Can you tell us your story of your time in the NICU? We thought about this for a while and um, it took us a lot to recollect everything. Um, it's amazing in the time that you're in the NICU, how much you forget. It's, it's very, it's so hectic. Um, you don't do much in a day, but it just seems to go so fast at the same time. So um, our first visit to the NICU was actually when Mercer was diagnosed at 20 weeks utero. Uh, they brought us down to the NICU to show us where Mercer would be going after she was born. And you kind of everything's just surreal and you don't really know what you're looking at or how it's going to affect you or what's going on. Um, so we were kind of just in disbelief and we knew where we were going, but um, it was still like just that first glance was hard. And then the babies were born. Um, you can, you were down there before I was. So Maybe you yeah, being that, about it. being that Mercer, um, we knew of her heart condition, you know, before they were born, um, we knew we'd be going into NICU and, and kind of um, that was to be expected. So the day the, the twins were born was very, um, I mean, it was, a, it was a hard day, but I mean, it was their blessing, of course. Um, but when Mercer was born, she was only with us in the, in the delivery room for minutes before they uh, before the team uh got her and and took her up to up to the NICU ward and and I was only able to stay in there for a few minutes while they worked on her and before I was um taken away and, and you know back with Lisa and and Scotty in, in the delivery room and for recovery but um when you go into NICU you know and, and you're going through all of this you you think you're the only ones that are going through this and, and this emotional time. And then that door opens and you see dozens of infants in NICU all needing care. Um, it's really, uh, it's really eye opening and life changing to see that. And, and, uh, you know, to, to realize that Mercer is going to be needing this type of care and, and, um, is, is hard. Um, but we knew that everyone there was was in there for her best interests and for all the kids' best interests. And uh, so we, we felt very comfortable with it all. Yeah. So we spent was it a week in Saskatoon um, and then we were transferred to the Stollery NICU. Um, and then we were there for two weeks and then back to Saskatoon's NICU for, it was just one day and then they transferred us into the peds ward at uh, RUH. So while we were in NICUs, we got to see a couple of them. Um, and Saskatoon's was not as family orientated as Edmonton's. Um, Mercer, Mercer and Scotty actually didn't meet until they were a week old after they were delivered. Um, Aubrey got to meet Mercer when she was 10 days old in Edmonton's NICU. So there was like some differences and some just getting used to the facilities 
and how they they were taking care um, of our child and all the other children in there. So um, just really eye opening every single day and every single time we went in because you mm-hmm. never knew what you were walking into. So. For sure. I've been sharing some photos with me prior to of transport at first. Was that from Regina to Edmonton or from Saskatoon? Yeah, from Saskatoon. So being that we knew of Mercer's condition beforehand, um, we knew we were going into NICU um, as soon as she was born. And we also knew we were being transferred to Edmonton um, for surgery as soon as possible. So um, our time in NICU was was a lot of uh, waiting um, until we could get in. And, and I mean, in order to get into NICU in Edmonton, there has to be spaces available as their NICU is um, just as busy as anywhere, unfortunately. Um, so we were really there just waiting till we could get transferred. Um, and with that came delays, uh, you know, if it was too cloudy, they couldn't fly. If, uh, you know, the weather wasn't right, they couldn't fly. If we were booked one time to go or she was booked one time to fly and, and then it got canceled. Um, so it comes with frustration and, and, um, but while you're there, they're, um, to keep you calm and they, they have everything under control until that time you can go. And, um, when you do finally get that phone call that they're transferring Mercer, it's, it's a whirlwind. And, um, I was supposed to fly there with her, um, and it was actually just shortly after I was told that they weren't going that day. So I, when I went back to um, my in-laws for the night, um, then they, or for the day, I guess, then they called almost as soon as I got back there saying that they were transferring her. So we packed our bags and we drove as safely, but as fast as we could, um, knowing that Mercer would be there a few hours before us. So it was um, nerve wracking knowing that they were transferring her without us being there for her, you know, but again, you just have to put your trust in, in those professionals, um, in NICU and the transfer team that they get her there safely. And, and, um, and when we did finally get there, you know, she was just snug as a bug in NICU in Edmonton and, and, um, everyone was happy to see her and knew of her condition and knew of the plan and and knew what we were there for. So, uh, there was, I mean, of course, lots of preparation and meetings um, for us to have with surgeons, but um, it was uh, it was an all around good transfer. How is how is Mercer doing today? How are you, Mercer? <laughs> good. Um, she's she's a three and a half year old. She has a heart condition. She has a feeding tube, but she's a three and a half year old and. She runs, she jumps, she went to skate this winter. She goes to pre-kindergarten um, at a local school. She she loves being a sous chef. Like <laughs> she is a three and a half year old through and through. And um, despite her medical conditions, which are stable right now, um, she's good. This this coming year is gonna be a little bit different for her as she um, will have a minimum of three surgeries. Uh, so it it's good right now and we'll see what happens. What kind of surgeries does Mercer have to have this year? Her, well, to go back, I guess. So she, um, when she was 12 days old, um, she had her first open heart surgery. Um, and then, uh, so I mean, if, along with that was all the recoveries and, and whatnot, um, and learning for everyone. And then in that, that same fall, she had her second open heart surgery, which we were well aware of that needed to happen. I mean, even before she was born, it was all planned out for us. Um, and then the, the third surgery uh, as part of her condition, we knew was coming. And, uh, you know, after the second one, she's been really good. Um, she did develop, I mean, she went into heart failure, <laughs> she went into heart failure after her second yeah, surgery ten months old. and, um, and that's where the feeding tube came from. Uh, it was just part of, I guess, symptoms of, of it and side effects. 
Um, but knowing that we, the third surgery is coming is, it's hard to take in. Um, we've, we've had her like this for two years with, you know, our regular checkups, um, with our team in Saskatoon and, and she's been doing so good and growing and she's so smart. And, but we know that 2021 is going to be a really big year for her with, with, um, she needs to have a cardiac catheter, um, which monitors her heart and they check for pressures and, and function. And then, uh, her second, uh, procedure, we're not sure if it's in Saskatoon or Edmonton yet, but we'll be putting in her, uh, tube into her stomach, um, for direct feeds. And, and then we can get rid of the feeding tube. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and then the third one will be her, her open, her yeah, her open heart surgery. So, um, it'll be a challenge like anything else. And, and, uh, you know, being that we know about it and we know that it's coming, I don't know if that's better or worse, but at least we're, we're able to prepare for it mentally and physically and, and um, know we have to keep her healthy and, and stable for, for that long. So That's absolutely it. What would you say to the nurses and the doctors who have been helping you through this and the level of care and support? they've given you through Regina Sassett. You, you can't say thank you enough. You can't, you can't express um, what they've done for her. Um, you go through the, the NICU and they're the best of the best with these kids. They're, they're everything. They're, they're lifesavers. Um, they got her through the first, the first 14 days of her life, um, which were very, very critical for her. And then another two weeks after that, she was in there and it was very critical. Um, so you can't say enough about the, the NICU teams. As for the surgeons, God bless their hands. God bless their everything. <laughs> um, because they have to keep steady hands during those surgeries because you're working with millimeters of arteries and veins that can be life or death. Um, and then just, just the follow-up teams that we've dealt with in Saskatoon. It's, it's a quick call. It's a quick email and they're calling you back. They're helping you out. They're getting you to the right people. Um, I've seen, most of the pediatric team, sorry, pediatric cardiac team in Saskatoon, like average every two weeks for the last three years. Um, at some point it was every day. At other points it was once every two weeks. Now, luckily we're at the point where it's once every three months. Um, but they're just, they're an outstanding group of people that, that just watch and they just care. They, they love watching Mercer come through the door and seeing how she's advanced um, and how she's doing. So they just mean so much to us. Yeah, we've seen dozens of doctors and nurses and specialists and surgeons and, and they're, all, they're all just so, I mean, they're professional. But we've, we've seen, you know, especially our team, our cardiac team in Saskatoon, you know, we see them so often that they've become like friends, <laughs> you know, to us. And, and um, we feel like they legitimately care about us and about Mercer. And, you know, we know full well that before we got there, they saw someone with a similar condition or worse than Mercer. And, and when we leave our appointment, another one comes through the door and, and they make you feel like you're their only patient of the day or of the week. They just, they take their time. They're so thorough and um, it's just amazing to see. And um, it, it puts us as parents at ease a lot um, knowing that, that we have that type of connection with them and, and that we can, they're only a phone call away literally um, because they respond so well. And if we have any questions ever, we get answers right away. So the, the team, we can't say enough. We just, 
we thank them so much for, for keeping Mercer alive and, uh, and, and being what she is today. So. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and I know the Sandra Schmiller Foundation appreciates it as well to share your story of Mercer and the struggles and also the positive times you've been able to experience so far, Mercer being three and still here. Um, and I'd just like to say thank you for taking your time to do this. Yeah, Mercer, do you want to say thank you to your doctors and nurses? Thank you to my doctors and nurses. Awesome. Yeah. Can you wave bye to the camera, Mercer? Wave bye. Have to wave. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephen Harper. The Sandra Schmirler Foundation has given almost $5 million to hospitals in Canada to help purchase life-saving equipment for babies born premature or critically ill. Thank you for donating today and helping babies in our community have the chance to grow up and become a champion, just like Sandra. Of course, that was former Prime Minister Stephen Harper with a message. And before that, the Johnson family sharing their story. Um, and we didn't get a chance because obviously things are going so quick, but they were also uh, commenting on our social feed. So hello to the Johnson family and thanks for tuning in and watching with us. And of course, sharing your story with us all. And we're going to go to a video now from Laura and Jeff Walker, two curlers. Um, one represents Alberta. We just saw Laura actually playing in this morning's draw at the Scotties. Jeff Walker, of course, plays for Team Gushu out of Newfoundland. And they're gonna share some of their experience with the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. And one thing that's really interesting is Laura Walker has her son, Liam, with her in the bubble. She's the only player to be allowed a family member with her in the bubble. Um, but Jeff also is gonna discuss a fond memory he has of Sandra Schmirler. Hi everyone. Today I'd like to welcome Jeff and Laura Walker and their newborn Liam. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Can you guys tell us more about how you became involved with the Sandra Schmirler Foundation? Uh, for me, it kind of started when I curled with Kathy Overton Clapham uh, a few years ago. She's on the board of directors with the foundation and she's just a huge part of the foundation. And so being around her kind of inspired me uh, to get involved a little bit more. Yeah. And for myself, uh, once Laura got involved, obviously it was easy for me to get involved. And, and uh, obviously she, once she was on the calendar, um, I was able to get over the calendar the next, uh, the next year when they did the men's calendar. For sure. And between both the 2019 and 2020 calendar sales, you raised $30,000 for the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. Why did you choose the Sandra Schmirler Foundation as a charity to donate your calendar sales to? Yeah, again, for me, Kathy was a big part of it. I saw how involved she was. And also just being a curler, you grow up, um, you know, hearing Sandra's name and, and seeing lots about the foundation. And um, at the time of the calendar, Jeff and I were starting to, you know, to get a little started on our journey to having a family as well. And um, just the thought of, of needing some sort of life-saving equipment to, you know, keep our little guy healthy and safe. And, and the thought of that just um, really, really spoke to me and really stuck with me. And so it seemed like a pretty natural choice. For yeah, it's with me, obviously, uh, having this little guy and, and, and now actually when you look, look at it, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's something that you don't think of when you're, when you're, before you have a child and, and, you know, I couldn't imagine, uh, what a lot of those parents go through with their kids and in, in NICU and, and I just think it's a, it's an awesome foundation and luckily it's, it's a big part of curling. Laura, being a new mom and competing at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts in a bubble is no easy task. How will you juggle being skip of Team Alberta in the bubble with a new baby? Uh, the guy beside me here is going to be a big help. Luckily, we are allowed to um, have one caregiver in the bubble with me and Liam and having that be Jeff is going to be a huge relief. Being born in a pandemic means that uh, 
he hasn't really met many other people, including our family members. So uh, just the familiarity of having him around will be big. And my teammates have been incredibly supportive as well. And they, um, I know they're, they're going to let me put Liam first in the bubble and not have any issues with that whatsoever. So um, it's going to be busy. It's going to be different. I might be a little more sleep deprived than I normally am uh, at a Scotty's, but um, I'm really excited that he actually gets to be there and, and be a part of it and look back one day and said, you know, Hey, I was, I was there in this crazy year in this bubble watching my mom play and um, I'm looking forward to it. That's awesome. And super, super exciting to be able to go and share that as a family and be there all together. And that's just super, super exciting. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Jeff, do you have any memories of Sandra growing up? You know, my biggest memory would be the big in-off that she made uh, to win the Olympic trials um, in, I guess, 97. Uh, I would have been about 12, 13 years old, so just getting into curling at that time. And uh, I just remember uh, remember watching that, and then obviously her winning the gold in, in Nagano was, uh, was really cool uh, at my age. For sure. And how can people donate to helping babies born too small, too soon, or too sick? You can call the number on your screen or you can visit sandrashmurler.org to donate. Awesome. Well, thank you both for joining us and Liam for joining us as well today and helping champions start small. Thank you and best of luck at the Scotties and Briar in Calgary. Thank you. Thank you very much. And those are just, those are some lovely memories. I love Jeff's memory of Sandra Schmerler making the in-off mm -hmm. to go to the Olympics at the trials. Like there's been um, TSN showing the best top 50 curling shots of all time. And I think it was included. So check that out. Um, and great to see Liam too, the little nugget in the bubble. <laughs> um, if you follow Laura Walker on Instagram or Twitter, they're showing so many photos of him. So that's really cute, but great to see the whole family. Super cute. I, my favorite was the little at the end with the little baby wave. Yeah. Super cute. So again, uh, thanks to the Walker family for sharing their, their stories and their experiences. And, and uh, you know, um, we're going to keep things going. We've been talking about the social media uh, a lot this mm -hmm. past this this morning. Um, and we're going to check in again with our friend Darren McEwen, who's going to be joining us live right away to let us know about uh, what's happening on social media. Again, we have you know, in front of us, we can see people's comments and, and statements of what they're doing and how they're tuning in. Darren, what, are you, what can you share with us? How's the hashtag too? I want to know. Champions <laughs> start small. It's going really well. <laughs> it's a great start to the day. Um, continue to follow us, share your stories, how this foundation has helped someone in your life. Um, maybe it's a grandchild, a child, or niece or nephew. Uh, it's at Sandra Schmerler on Twitter uh, and Instagram, and of course, right here on Facebook. Just uh, drop your story right into the chat. Um, we already have one here from Renora Westcott. She's the alternate, and of course, Scotty Silver Medalist from 2017. Thing, uh, she's putting a challenge out there to all front end curlers to donate. Uh, Amy Nixon, you know that name. She's a two time Scotty's champion. She just tweeted to let us know she's donated. Simon Barrick says Sandra is the reason he first got into curling many years ago. Uh, Scott Keller wrote to us on Twitter and said he vividly remembers watching Sandra curl on TV when he was a teen. Her in-off to win the Olympic trials, just like Jeff talked about, it's etched into his uh, brain and gives him goosebumps every time he pictures it. Gold at Nagano, what a curler, what a lady. I'm three years older than Sandra when she passed. We lost her too soon. And Jill Bennett writes on Twitter, um, it's been a tough year financially for many people, uh, but if you can, uh, she's encouraging people to donate and to give back. And that's a great point that Jill raises. Even if in the past, maybe you've given $100, $200, and this year it's a bit tougher to do that for you, just consider switching to monthly donations if that's something that you can do. Tell the volunteer when you call into the number or when you go online to do the donation that you'd like to do monthly installments. So you can turn that into maybe a $10 a month or $20 a month. It's just easier to budget. It's actually better for the foundation, too, because the foundation can budget easier around that um, coming in as a donation. So early momentum here on Telethon Day, just like Laura Walker on the ice and Team Alberta. Um, also, I just want to talk a little bit about these pins we're wearing. Make sure I'm on the right side here. Here we go. And you ladies have them on as well. Um, you've seen the curlers wearing them uh, the last few days and today on TSN. They're wearing this pin. It's a special 20th anniversary pin, and you can get yours by visiting 
our website, sandrashmurler.org, and you just click on the shop tab at the top. And you can also get uh, one of these masks that you've probably seen some of us wearing on social media and, and uh, wearing throughout the winter and on the ice. Some of the curlers have them as well at their curling clubs. You can purchase those online as well. Um, and that's thanks to the community fundraiser for doing those. But back to the pins, one thing we learned about social media is this new website called houseofcurlingpins.com. And it was launched uh, last year. And I'll drop this in the chat, by the way, so you can uh, visit this. It's an enthusiastic handful of some of the world's best-known curling pin collectors, Sabine and Claire. And they come together from their shared love of the sport of curling and curling pin collecting. And they have almost every, pretty much every curling pin you can think of. Like I'm thinking back to my hometown curling club. I always thought it only ever had one pin. But if you go on houseofcurlingpins.com, you can actually see that there's been several over many decades that I didn't know about. Um, they've actually published uh, every uh, pin that the foundation uh, that we put out every year that looks slightly different. I have one here that's kind of like the, the heart uh, that we had a few years ago. Um, and on the site, you can see what they look like. But uh, there's over 19,000 curling pins on this website, houseofcurlingpins.com. And we want to give a special th a shout out to, to the pin people um, who help us with our pin every year. So great thanks to them. Um, so I'm going to drop this website in the chat. Now you got a little bit of trivia. You can get lost uh, in that website uh, after you make your donation. But that's just a little bit of kind of the curling culture. It's just so unique to, to them. Awesome. Thank you so much, Darren. Uh, again, uh, we checked in with you in the morning. We checked in with you now, and I'm sure we'll be checking in with you again in a little while. But thanks again for sharing uh, all that you're seeing and reading on social media during this telethon. Thanks, ladies. That's Darren McEwen, who is, of course, the foundation, or yeah, McEwen, who's the foundation's digital content manager. Now, we're going to head into a couple of videos that we want to uh, share with everyone who's tuning in right now. Uh, the first video that you're going to see is going to be the uh, legacy giving video. So it'll be Nick Locke, who's part of the Sandra Schmerler Foundation Board of Directors, um, discussing the importance of carrying on Sandra's legacy by accomplishing the goal of having life-saving equipment in all NICUs across Canada. And of course, you can help create a legacy of hope for babies and their families by, as Darren mentioned, the monthly donations or leaving a gift in your will. So that will be the first video that you'll see. And after we hear from Nick Locke, we're going to hear from Ann Merklinger, who was actually the founding chair of the Sandra Schmerler Foundation. She's also the CEO of Own the Podium. And we heard Darren there talking a little bit about the pins. Well, she was actually one of, she sketched out one of the first foundation pins, which is really cool. Um, and, you know, she's going to discuss the foundation, the memory of Sandra, and um, having some memories actually playing. Sandra Schmerler. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Nick Locke and uh, I'm honoured uh, to have recently joined the board of the Sandra Schmerler Foundation. As I'm sure you know, Sandra was a Canadian curler who captured three Canadian curling championships and three world curling championships. And she led her Canadian team to a gold medal at the 1998 Winter Olympics. The first year women's curling was a medal sport. A mother of two, Sandra sadly passed away in 2000 at the age of 36 with her daughters Jenna and Sarah just eight months and two years old. But Sandra has left a legacy with a much further reach than curling. The Sandra Schmuller Foundation was founded in her memory to create a future where every hospital neonatal intensive care unit has the necessary life-saving equipment to handle any emergency and save the lives of babies born premature and critically ill. And due to Sandra's legacy, all babies born too soon, too small, or too sick will be cared for in a hospital equipped with life-saving equipment and closer to their homes, their family, and their friends. And let's be honest, if it wasn't due to the support of individuals like you, we would not have been able to give over $4.9 million to fund this life-saving equipment in hospitals across Canada. Since I've been involved with the foundation, I've made numerous donations and have also chosen to become a monthly donor as well. But if there's one word that resonates with me when I think of Sandra, it's her legacy. 
and the support of donors who have chosen to match Sandra's legacy through making a gift to the foundation in their will. So when you make a gift in your will to the Sandra Schmuller Foundation, you are truly creating a legacy of hope and health for young babies and their families in the future. Legacy gifts, large or small, are a wonderful way to support a cause you care about and to make a lasting difference, just as Sandra had. So that's why we've put together more information as to how you can do this in a brochure called You're In My Heart Forever. On our website, you can view and download it and also request a printed version, which we will be very pleased to send to you. Already we have had over a 100 requests from donors for this brochure because they are considering a gift in their will. And we hope you would consider such a gift too. Thank you for donating and supporting the Sandra Schmuller Foundation. Your support helps babies grow up and become champions. Just Walk us like through, Sandra. I guess, 20 years ago, uh, yourself and others uh, uh, forming the foundation in Sandra's memory. Well, in the very early days when Sandra was still alive, um, I was chairing the women's curling tour. And um, I remember sitting around a dinner table with my teammates and we sketched out a pin that we wanted to uh, design and, and get manufactured that all of the women's curlers in the country could wear when they competed in a bond spiel. So spiels that were part of the women's curling tour. And it was really a, uh, a desire to channel all of our collective positive energy uh, and spirit and positive thoughts into helping Sandra recover from her illness. So, I mean, uh, as you look back on those those days, uh, you know, uh, leading up to 2000, you can see many of our, our fellow curlers wearing these very distinctive, uh, what are now what were then the Sandra Schmirler curling pins and the foundation pins. And of, of course, after Sandra died, uh, that pin became the, the first pin of the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. So uh, it was, um, you know, it was a very important uh, moment for us as curlers to uh, collectively harness her spirit and carry on her legacy. Um, after Sandra died, it was Robin Wilson who came up with the idea of the foundation and Robin approached the family and they were very supportive and through Robin's uh, tremendous efforts, she got the Canadian Curling Association on side, now Curling Canada, and together with Robin's leadership, the foundation was created. And importantly, Bob Stewart, who was the CEO of Scott Paper at the time and was a tremendous champion of women's curling, uh, he also, on behalf of the, the business, on behalf of the company, provided financial support and tremendous energy and enthusiasm to help get the foundation up and running. You know, I was very privileged to be the founding chair of the foundation, uh, very honored to do that and served uh, as the chair of the foundation from 2001 through to 2004. What, Anne, was it like to play against Sandra and her team? Well, I still, just in preparing for this, uh, recall, um, you know, what it was like to play against uh, Team Schmirler. Uh, Sandra and her team, frankly, were like a well-oiled machine. They they never quit. Uh, no battle was ever in what I call the too hard pile. Uh, they had fun competing in a sport, and you could feel their passion uh, on and off the ice. Uh, they were tremendous friends, um, and you could you could see that in uh, wherever they went, uh, whether it was on the ice or off the ice. They also uh, took tr uh, tremendous responsibility for their role, uh, for their position as role models for young girls and women involved in sport, and they took that responsibility very seriously and. Uh, you know, Marcia and Jan and Joan still take that responsibility very seriously, as do Sandra's family. So, uh, you know, again, I think that's part of Sandra's legacy. And Sandra and her team also had such a high level of respect and appreciation for their sport, for their opponents, and for everyone who made the sport happen. And, um, you know, that was what uh, Sandra and her teammates brought to, to the sport at that time. So take us back to 1998. Um, I'm sure it was quite memorable for you. It was very memorable for them, of course, but you were playing them in the playoffs in their home province. And 
Um, you talked about like ambassadors of the sport. They were huge ambassadors for Saskatchewan and still are to this day. Um, what was it like competing against Sandra in essentially like her home turf uh, after she came back w- uh, from winning an Olympic gold medal and you had to go out there um, in an arena that's basically cheering entirely for her? Yeah, I mean, I remember like it was yesterday and, um, you know, the Olympic Games and then when Sandra g- gave birth to her, um, you know, her, her child provided tremendous perspective for Sandra and her team in terms of, you know, what's important to us as as women and as leaders. And I'll never forget walking out in the opening ceremonies and Sandra and her teammates carrying, you know, the gold medal around their necks and having represented Canada so well in Nagano. And, you know, they just, like, the ovation was just thunderous in terms of the appreciation from everyone who was there in the arena and on television. I can't imagine what what it would have been like. And they started off slow. You know, they probably, you know, may not have wanted to be there. They really wanted to be home with their families and recovering from the Olympic Games and resting and kind of regrouping. But, you know, in, in typical Team Schmirler Foundation, they, they hung tough. They... Um, They uh, battled in every game, uh, gained momentum, and once that team gained momentum, look out. And, um, you know, we, I remember we played them in the semifinal, and um, it was a very close battle. And uh, there was a really, one really key shot I remember we made. And Sandra and her team were so gracious. They were so, um, so uh, supportive of, of our team. We worked really hard as a team. And again, they were so genuine and authentic in, um, in wishing us well as we went into the final, which we lost in an extra end. But, you know, that was two times that happened to us. But I'll never forget just how supportive and genuine and authentic they were. I'm sure it was a relief for them when they got off the ice and they could go and, and really have some time to celebrate their tremendous accomplishments as uh, Olympic gold medalists for themselves and the sport and for Canada. So we're coming up on 20 years of the foundation and the telethon, um, and it's grown tremendously over the years. We came off of a, a record telethon last year in Moose Jaw. Of course, the last year has been very different with COVID, and we've been very fortunate that the curling community continues to support the foundation, and it's it, we've had a tremendous year even through the pandemic. What um, what are ways that people can um, that are involved, maybe outside of curling, uh, maybe don't have a connection to Sandra as a curler, but what are some ways that people could continue to keep the legacy of Sandra uh, and this foundation strong? Well, I think all the current donors, I I encourage them to continue donating. Um, You know, despite the challenges of the pandemic, we've seen record levels of uh, contribution to charities, uh, people who are in a a position to give back and help those that are less fortunate, people who are in a position to support their causes. And the foundation continues to change the lives of families across our country from coast to coast to coast. And the foundation does an extremely good job of telling the stories of of the impacts of support financial support from from the foundation. I certainly encourage supporters to share the foundation's foundation's message on social media. Tell your friends, tell your families, tell your neighbors, uh, get the word out there. Social media is uh, one of the most effective means of communicating as, as we've seen in so many instances. And then finally, consider the foundation and your plans related to legacy giving. Um, you know, that is uh, very much on the minds of many of us uh, during this, these challenging times. And I think that's uh, another way to honor Sandra, uh, her family and the foundation. All right. Again, that was Darren having a chat with Anne Merklinger. And before that, of course, Nick Locke talking about the legacy giving. Um I just want to touch on, we had a chance earlier this morning to chat with Sarah, Jenna and Shirley um, from Sandra's family, of course, talking about how they'll be answering phones. And I'm sure a lot of people probably didn't get a chance to really hone in on what they were wearing. But Clary, you're probably going to give us a little bit more information on that. Yeah, we're actually going to do a little bit of an unboxing a bit later. So if you paid attention to their their jerseys, they're really special. Um, Colin Hodgson, he's a player with Team McEwen, and also he is the owner of Dynasty Curling. If you've ever paid attention to the jerseys at the Scotties and the Briar, they're all created by Dynasty Curling. And um, they offered to do something really special this year for the Sandra Schmirler Foundation in celebration of its 20th anniversary. So let's take a look. Oh, look at this. Oh, wowee. With my name on the 
I'm back. We're joined now by a very special guest coming from the Calgary bubble, none other than curler Jennifer Jones. And Jennifer, you're making your 20th Scotty's appearance, which is unbelievable, but it's your first one in a bubble. Maybe you can just take us through, you know, how different this is for you as a competitor um, without fans, without your family around. Yeah, I think that's the biggest difference is no fans and no family. My kids have not missed a Scotty, so it's it's definitely weird not to have them here and to give them a hug after the game. And then just the roar of the, the crowd when somebody makes a good shot or the ooze when somebody has a miss. So that part is different. But other than that, it doesn't feel that much different, to be honest. And it's just exciting and to be on the ice during these crazy times. You know, uh, Jennifer, we're super excited to have you joining us today, uh, you know, with the Sandra Schmerler Foundation to be talking about the importance of donating. We are setting a lofty goal of uh, raising $500,000 today. Um, I just wanted to ask you, you know, why, why is the uh, foundation and why is donating uh, to this foundation so important? As a mom, I can't even imagine um, what some moms go through, what some parents go through when their, their kids are born sick or premature. And... The Sandra Schmeller Foundation has helped so many fa families, thousands of them, in a really challenging time, trying to make sure that the kids get the care they need, the best equipment, but also so that the, they can stay close to their families, which I think is just so important. It's done so many good things, and uh, like I said, as a mom, I can't even imagine, and I, I just think it's just such an, an incredible charity that gives back to people when they really need it the most, when they're so vulnerable. You know, we have been hearing lots of uh, personal accounts, uh, you know, real life stories of how the NICU has helped families. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, you are a mother. How, you know, what kind of stories have you heard or what would you say is the importance when it comes to the NICU? It just, there's just, so, they're so fragile. They're these little babies that you just love so much. And I know my first uh, daughter was born early and she had to go and get some special care when she was first born and she she was okay and we didn't spend a lot of time in hospital but for those brief seconds i was so scared for her and to know that your your little baby is going to get the best possible care the best possible treatment and that you can stay there close with them and give them the love that you have so much for them and to be able to support them and that to me is what the Sandra Schmeller foundation does it gives these little babies a chance where they may not otherwise have had it and uh, and give the parents some hope in, in a really difficult situation. Now, Goldline, we understand, has created this 20th anniversary yes. broom, and you guys have a really special one that you've all signed as your team. Tell us what kind of a competition you're involving as incentive to donate. <laughs> oh, and you've got it right in front of you. <laughs> I have it. It's hard to share in the bubble because I'm, like, in my hotel room. But That's it is amazing. beautiful. I was, like, really, really impressed. It's gorgeous. And it has like the 40th anniversary. Oh, if you go to our team social, any of our social uh, sites, there's going to be a link. So any donation gets you in chance for the draw. Any amount helps. Let's try to raise as much money as we can. All of these charities and foundations are struggling with COVID, trying to create new uh, ways in order to, uh, to raise money that they have in the past. And the Sanders Sparrow Foundation does so much for Canadian families. Let's try to donate as much as we can. And then you'll be entered in to win this beautiful broom that you can use in the curling season next year. Fingers crossed everything comes back to normal. And Jen, your team has signed that, right? Can we see the signatures? Is that the actual broom? This is the broom, but we have not signed it yet because we have not been allowed, but we're mm. finally getting clear to uh, be able to do these things. So the broom will be signed, I promise, and we will do very nice signatures for everybody. We should have set you up with a Sharpie and watched you actually <laughs> sign it officially on this, but we'll trust that's the broom. Thank you so much it for joining It is the broom, us. and I'm like holding my phone with my right hand. I don't even know how it would sign it, so. <laughs> you know what? You're an amazing curler, but you're also good at juggling things, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Jennifer. Um, best of luck in the rest of the Scott Tournament of Hearts. And of course, everybody, go on. Let's donate. Let's get the money. Let's set the goal. We've set the goal of $500,000 today. And I know we're getting close, but let's e each donation helps. Let's do it, you guys. It's just it's something that we can feel proud of. And I, I know that it's going to go to great use. And you're going to see these kids grow up to be shining stars for Canada. So let's donate and have some fun watching the Scotties this week. Jennifer Jones, thank you very much. Thanks, thank Jennifer. You. Hi, I'm Ben Hebert, lead for Team Kevin Cooey. Uh, Sandra Schmirler was always a hero of mine growing up in Regina. I uh, watched her win the 98 Winter Olympics. I remember going to the airport as a young kid, uh, cheering on her and her team, and she was always one of my, my favorites growing up. Uh, today is Sandra Schmirler Day at the Scotties. 
please, if you have the means, donate to sandraschmirler.org. Team Cooey is going to be donating. I hope everybody else can too. Hope everybody enjoys the Scotties. Johnny? And my name is Johnny Moe from Team Cooey. Uh, I just wanted to quickly share my favorite Sandra Schmirler memory. I remember playing in the uh, 1998 Canadian Juniors in, right here in Calgary, Alberta. And Sandra Schmirler was there after she had just won uh, the Olympics and uh, was commentating our game. And I felt like we were on cloud nine. And she really inspired uh, me and, and, uh, and my teammates to, to get to those Olympics one day. So thanks for everything she's done. And if you can, please donate, sandraschmirler.org. Thank hope, you, guys. Hope everybody's doing okay out there. That was John Morris <laughs> and Ben Hebert from Team Cooey. Of course, we'll be seeing them in the Briar in a couple weeks, but right now it's all about the Scotties Tournament of Hearts and the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. And we have an update, a huge update. Very important. We are ready to show a total right now of where we're sitting at with our donations. We were sharing it on social, but right now this is a surprise for all of us. Drum roll, Claire. Right here, I'm giving the drum roll. And also <laughs> remember that our goal was $500,000. What are we at? $191,834. Oh, that was not the right way to say it. Hank's even <laughs> excited. $191,834 donated, and it is only just under one thirty. So we have a goal of... $500,000 is like I mentioned before. And so, Thank yeah, down. we do have a dog in the studio today. It's just an added bonus. But we, you know what? We were kind of Thank joking about this. Down. It's a 15 hour day, but we are only four or five hours into it. And so, if this is where we're on pace, I think we can be on pace to definitely surpass $500,000. Oh. But it should be, you know, it's going to be really exciting. We've mentioned a few times social media hashtag champion start small we are seeing your facebook messages come in um you know awesome job darren keep up the good work he's our social media guy in ottawa he's been watching all the tweets coming in um taking into accounts but um sabine I'm what are you <laughs> i know she's a little she's you know what we have another we have a another type of baby in we the studio well we got a puppy introduce them. we, we got a puppy yeah he, he was featured on your social media yeah. Hank is your baby yeah he's my baby and we decided to let him join us today and help us out with the telethon so we we didn't even realize that he's been wandering around we've gotten so used to him so he's joining us he got a little excited about that total you can't blame him yeah and he might wander in and out of the screen but anyways it's just it's just adding to the whole flavor of the day i hope i hope you guys at home don't mind <laughs> i did have some brief points that we wanted to talk about yes. we, we talked about the total we saw the total of 191,000 uh right now that we're where we're at and again just wanted to touch on um where that money goes so sandra's foundation works to ensure all babies born too soon too small or too sick will be cared for in a nicu equipped with state-of-the-art life-saving equipment close to their homes, family, and friends. And donations like yours um, obviously have changed the lives of thousands of grateful families. We've seen some of the stories already throughout this morning and heading into this afternoon. And each year, thousands of Canadian babies are born prematurely or critically ill. And committed people like you all make the difference in their fragile lives. So for that, we are very thankful and we will continue to watch those donations come in. As you mentioned, 500,000 is what we're looking at uh, for a total today. And we've had some great people come on, special guests. We had Jennifer Jones a little bit earlier just talking about she has two daughters and what it would mean to her, you know, if she had to have her daughter. She, one of them, I believe, actually had to go in the NICU for a little bit. Um, and a little bit later, we're actually going to be hearing from Lisa Weagle, who um, now plays lead for Team Manitoba with Jennifer Jones. She's actually one of the board members of the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. And... Um, there are different options of making a donation. You can make a small or a large donation today, but there's the option that's easy and convenient, um, just a small monthly donation. And, and she talks a bit about this. And what makes that great for the foundation is that they have this steady income coming in, um, which is obviously in times like right now with COVID-19 and the pandemic, very helpful. Um, but it's, it's a stable source of income for the foundation throughout the year. For sure. And we're also going to be seeing another video following right after that, uh, the Ryan Point video, which basically is a story that's going to focus on a mom, Stacy, who gets an ultrasound at 10 weeks and finds out that they will be having twins. Um, the story is going to share the experience in the NICU and how uh, the baby is being immediately put into an incubator. And nurses needed the dad to do skin-to-skin -skin, um, connection with the baby. And it's very important for preemie babies. So you'll see more of the story in the full full uh, outcome of that story right after the first one that Claire introduced.
Hi, I'm Lisa Weagle. I'm a curler on Team Manitoba, and I'm also a board member at the Sanders Schmerler Foundation. And I'd really like to thank you for tuning in today to the telethon on Sandra Schmirler Day and seeing some of these incredible stories and the amazing work that is done by the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. Every year, I was always really excited and really proud to make my donation to the foundation. And this year, for the first time, I've actually signed up for monthly donations. So now my donation is actually spread out across 12 months. It's super easy and convenient to set up. The money automatically comes out of your account every month and you get a tax receipt at the end of the year. So if that's something that interests you when you're calling to make your donation or when you're going on the website, um, you can select that option. It's something that really helps the foundation as well in terms of having that stable source of income throughout the year. So on behalf of myself, on behalf of the entire Sanders Merlin Foundation, I would really like to thank you for your donations and for tuning in. Thank and you for, for donating to the Sanders Merlin Foundation today. Your donation will help babies grow up and become champions just like Sandra. I'm Diane Gushalak, and our daughter Emma was born extremely premature at 23 weeks and four days in 2006. She weighed one pound, one ounce, and was given 20% odds of living. We spent four months in the NICU in BC Children's Hospital. Emma was a fighter, but she needed the help of the life-saving equipment provided in the NICU. Emma came home on Valentine's Day in 2007 and is now a healthy, happy 14-year-old. We are forever grateful. It's your generosity that has helped grant nearly $5 million for the purchase of life-saving equipment for babies in hospitals across Canada. Thank you for helping champions start small and giving them the opportunity to grow tall. I grew up in Ajax uh, my whole life. We were in the same house, on the same street, in the same city. I was raised to be polite, to respect elders, um, traits that I find are rare now a days. I first met Stacy in high school, and I remember meeting her and just, wow, she couldn't really stand me at the beginning. Okay slowly worked up the courage to ask her on a date and she said no. I got my courage back up and I asked her on another date and she said no again. About the fourth or fifth time I think I finally wore her down and she said yes. We were dating for two, two and a half years and we got married. I knew she wanted kids. I was never sure. Like I never saw myself as a father. I never, like, I never thought I was mature enough. We found out she was pregnant, so we'd go get an ultrasound done at 10 weeks just to make sure everything was okay. So the lady uh, doing the ultrasound said to Stacy, is this your first ultrasound? Yeah, is, is everything okay? Is, oh, so you don't know you're having twins. I was standing and I, I sat down on the couch and it just kind of washed over me. Stacy jumped up, she's crying, she's excited. The, ladies, the lady said, uh, okay, well let's lay down and we'll check for any more. And I said, no, you're done. You're done checking. Um, it was a weird feeling being in the delivery room. They cut them out for the C-section, give us a quick look, and were whisked away to the neonatal unit. They put them right in an incubator. Cheyenne has a, a breathing mask on, and they've got you know all these all these cables and, and cords and feeding tubes hooked up to them and. It's, it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to see in my life. There was a little concern with Avery because she was considerably smaller. She was three pounds, 12 ounces. Cheyenne was four pounds, three ounces, so she was a healthier weight. The nurses here told me to take off my shirt so we could do skin to skin because it's apparently it's, it's very important for newborns, preemie babies especially, to have direct skin contact with their parents. Stacy grabbed Cheyenne, I grabbed Avery, and. I just held her against my chest and felt her breathe and she was all nice and warm and I, I couldn't stop crying. 
It was incredible. I'd never thought that, you know, I was gonna love them instantly. I thought it was one of those things where, I, you know, I'd get to know them, take time, but it, it was just absolutely just blew me away, just changed my life completely in a matter of seconds. I can't say enough good things about Lake Ridge Health and the NICU, the neonatal ward here. Just going above and beyond, in my opinion, like how they make you feel comfortable, make you feel like it's your second home. When we were being discharged, first thing the nurses said is, oh, you gotta come back. You gotta come back, we can't wait to see you guys again. Oh my gosh, look at how When you're out with the girls and when somebody tells you how pretty they are, how beautiful they are, it makes you feel good. We might not have all the money in the world. You don't need that. You just need the love to be there. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Um, some really great videos, some great accounts from people across Canada who have had direct impacts from the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. And we're going to hear from a very famous curler, also a TSN broadcaster, Cheryl Bernard. Of course, she was an Olympic silver medalist at the Vancouver Olympics in 2010. Sabine, I have to say, I actually watched her play at the Olympics in Vancouver. It was an amazing experience. And I've met Cheryl since and just she's so cool. And um, she works. She's actually right now on top of being a broadcaster. She's the CEO for um, Canada's Olympic Hall of Fame in Calgary, which unfortunately it's been closed for a lot of the pandemic. But Cheryl, being being the famous person she is, she's a, has a memo account, which is kind of one of those systems where you can ask for her to make a greeting, a birthday wish, or something for somebody in your family. And she's actually donating the proceeds from her memo to the Sandra Schmirler Foundation, but she's also matching those donations. So just an amazing gesture from Cheryl Bernard. Very, very kind gesture, and we're going to see that video in just a second. And, and in the video, she'll be, she will be describing uh, a fond memory of playing Sandra in the lead-up to the 1998 Winter Olympic Games. Again, if you're just tuning in, you can uh, call this number on your screen there, one 210 if you want to make a donation, or you can head on over to sandraschmirler.org to make a donation online. And here is a video of Cheryl with her story. Hi, my name is Cheryl Bernard, and I was asked by the Sandra Schmirler Foundation to share, I guess, a personal story about Sandra Schmirler and her team. And uh, I will never forget it. It was 1998, and the team was on their way to represent Canada at the 1998 Olympics in Nagano. And uh, so they were trying to get some exhibition games as they'd come to Calgary to train a little bit before they, they went over. Uh, so we were one of the games that were set up and we were, we were so excited to play them. And so we had a pretty good game to start with, uh, but ultimately they ended up beating our team. And, you know, our team always thought that maybe we contributed a little bit to that Olympic gold medal by giving them a boost of confidence on their way over to Nagano. So I think for us, when they stood on that podium, we felt like we were part of that gold medal. And, and I think the bigger takeaway probably for all of us was that, um, you realize that anything is possible and having role models like those four individuals allowed us to, to dream big and, and believe in our Olympic uh, pursuits and ultimately stand on the 2010 podium in Vancouver. So that was a pretty amazing outcome for us. And the Sandra Schmirler Foundation is making it possible for so many boys and girls to have that same opportunity to realize their dreams and their opportunities because each year thousands of Canadian babies are born prematurely or critically ill and committed people like you and I are making all the difference in their fragile lives. Donations like ours can change the lives of thousands of grateful families and this year I was able to do just a little bit more and I'm so grateful. Um, 
you know, earlier this year, I was asked by Memo Canada to join um, their Canadian group. And Memo Canada, if you want to check it out, it's M-E-M-M-O dot me. And there is personalized memos that you can get from some pretty cool Canadians. And there's quite a few curlers on there. So wish a friend a happy birthday or, you know, razz one of your buddies. It's pretty fun. And what I decided to do through that was donate the proceeds that I received from Memo Canada to the Sandra Schmurter Foundation and, and also match those funds myself. You know, I think in the end, we may never know the children that our donation will help and we may never know the families, but these children and their families will go through life with their hearts full, knowing that we were there for them when they needed help the she most. She was more than just a curler. Thank she you. She was a friend to all those viewers and that's very true with us as well. We had the chance to listen to her and she she was warm, but she was she had that she had that little killer instinct. She knew when to put you away. And I've never met a champion yet that didn't have that inside them. And she certainly had it. But when she left the ice, and then she became just Sandra, the nice person, the nice mom, the nice wife. When you reflect back on her career and what she has accomplished, and how um, I think the entire nation fell in love with her, uh, the way she conducted herself. Uh, and she was always so accessible and she was the girl next door all during her career, even when she was so successful. And, and I think people related to that. And she, they, they developed that common bond with Sandra and uh, people who didn't even know her felt that they really knew her through her appearances on television and uh, the way she always made herself available and uh, was so accessible for the media for interviews and that sort of thing. So many people uh, watched her on the ice and saw how much she wanted to win and how competitive she was and what a great team member she was. But many people didn't see the other side of Sandra. and She was such a giving person. I remember a few times when we were at the World Championships with the team, it was tough to get to the arenas. We were in Europe and there wasn't the same kind of transportation we have in Canada. And they would always offer a ride to me. I'd be standing waiting to go to the rink. And in the van, it's still just nice chat about the family, not even thinking about the game. We're at a World Championship. But the team was just so giving, and especially Sandra, was open to everybody, media, fans, and to us. If there's inspiration to be, uh, to be had, it is that. Um, and I don't think there are many people in this country that haven't been touched by cancer. I know I have, both my parents. Um, and you wish they had the fight. She showed the fight and still lost. Um, there are people, though, that do win. And I think it comes through the, through the fight that she showed. Uh, the tragedy of it, of course, is this is a woman taken far too young with uh, two daughters and a husband that loved her dearly. That's the tragedy of it. What you saw is what you got with Sandra and, and her teammates out there. They were just down to home, small town girls, smiling, laughing all the time. You saw them doing that, but you also saw the fierce competitive side to them. Like they were, when they're out there playing, I mean, they were there for one purpose, to win, but, you know, they never lost focus that uh, family was important to them. I think they show that all the time from, from some of the interviews and that they've done and the, and the care they had for each other. I think that's what hit home is that they were like, more like friends out there than just teammates. You know, you see so many competitive teams mix and matching with their lines. So these guys would never have done that. They just loved each other too much. I think I'll miss her sense of humor and her smile. She had a great smile. She could make it people smile just by, you know, it just kind of lit up the room. And um, just her whole personality, she was just so bubbly and so alive. I think that's what I'll miss the most. I'll remember Sandra the person, the young woman that was, uh, that was such a good mom, that was such a loyal friend. That was uh, so much fun to be around. That had such a great sense of humor. Well, you know, I think um, part of the reason that she was so well liked was that what you saw on TV was what she was like away from TV and how she was playing a game or doing an interview or, or doing her, her broadcast for CBC or whatever. Um, that was Sandra. And I think people really fell in love with, with her, that she was so natural and she was so personable and she loved to have fun and she was very kind and caring, compassionate. And that's, that's who she was.
slight roll into the rings. She's got a good looking shot. She's got it. She's going to get the roll. Yes, she is. But it's hanging very straight. She's got it. Yes, she oh, got it. Oh. And she scores three. to its fullest and just keep fighting because if you quit fighting then you've lost the battle. I'll say it's hard not to get emotional watching those shots. Just takes you down memory lane. And anyway, Sandra Schmirler, just such an, a phenomenal competitor, fierce, fierce curler. And um, something else that it's really hard not to get emotional thinking about is the loss of Ali Jenkins uh, two years ago. She was a member of the curling community here in Saskatchewan. And uh, last year at the Scotties in Moose Jaw, um, Sherry Anderson, her former teammates, or Sherry Anderson, Megan Frerichs, and Nancy Martin were given honorary jerseys for Saskatchewan. They weren't representing Saskatchewan at last year, Scotty. Of course, that was Team Robin Silvernagel. But um, I was there, and it was it was such an emotional moment um, before the opening draw when the family, or pardon me, this was before draw on Sunday when the family was presented with these jerseys. Um, a lot of a lot of. Um, no, no dry eye in the house, let's put it that way. But this year, Team Anderson is representing Saskatchewan at the Scotties. And they've done an amazing gesture. They're actually, they've had a Team Jenkins jersey. And they're um, playing with it every single day on the bench. And um, we're going to hear from Ali Jenkins' uh, husband, Scott Jenkins, who's the father of three, Brady, Avery, and Sydney. Um, and... He hosted the Allie Jenkins Memorial Golf Tournament to keep Allie's memory alive here in the province. But that tournament last year raised $10,000 for the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. And he's also created a special player collection in her honor um, with the proceeds of this golf gear going to the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. So we're going to hear a very touching video from Scott Jenkins a little later. And following the Scott Jenkins video, we're actually also going to see a video uh, about the NICU expansion. And it's an interview with Dr. Graham Black, who's a pediatrician at Humber River Hospital Foundation. Um, and they'll show a, a mock demonstration of what happens to the baby after they are born and they go into NICU. Uh, and they'll also be talking about the state-of-the-art Omni beds, uh, which helps with the growth and development of these babies um, and babies who are born two months early they can take care of them. So those are two videos that we're going to see right now. First, the Scott Jenkins video, and after that, the NICU expansion. Today, we would like to welcome Scott Jenkins, father of three amazing children, Brady, Avery, and Sydney, who's Sydney's joining us right now. Can you wave, Sydney? Can you wave? Can you wave? <laughs> Scott's wife, Allie, tragically passed away due to rare complications during childbirth. Their daughter, Sydney. Thank you for joining us today. Scott and Sydney. Thanks for having me. Hi. Hi. Scott, your daughter, Sydney, spent time in the NICU after she was born. Can you tell us a little bit more about her stay in the NICU? <sighs> Yeah, um, obviously with everything happening on October 20th, um, the circumstances were a little different, obviously, but um, going into the NICU um, the first day, I guess, um, being told that she has no brain activity and her lungs aren't working um, and to prepare for the worst, um, which is definitely hard news to take. Um, the next day, uh, waking up, 
getting back to the hospital and going through the rounds with the doctors and having them in the room, um, things started to, to improve. And, uh, uh, I would just, I mean, from the doctors and the nurses and all the machines that were, were on here, I mean, she was attached to probably 50 machines. It seemed like, uh, there's cords everywhere. Um, but things started to improve. They started to get brain activity. Um, their lungs were working, um, obviously not to full capacity, but they were starting to come back. Um, and yeah, and being told, you know, she might not survive and then being told me it could be months, she could be here and, and being released in nine days was quite remarkable. So it was uh, definitely uh, news we needed, especially losing Allie the nine days before. It was uh, definitely uh, a good gift, uh, the last gift that Allie gave to us. So it was great. And how and how is Sydney doing today? So she's just a year, year and a half ish, almost. Yeah, year and a half, and she's she's doing amazing. Like we've done follow ups to the NICU, but they have no concerns anymore. She is uh, she's uh, came out of this really strong. She's a very smart girl, um, following in her brother and sister's footsteps. She's she was walking very very early. She's already talking. She's got a lot of words. Um, so she's definitely a the bright light right now she's definitely brings joy to this family so that's awesome scott and this past september you hosted the ali jenkins memorial golf tournament to keep ali's memory alive that raised ten thousand dollars for the sandra schmerler foundation can you share why you chose to support the sandra schmerler foundation you know uh, a couple months after ali passed we we're sitting there and <clears throat> trying to figure out a way to keep ali's memory alive um, she loved golf, um, obviously loved curling, um, and being that tight knit community with the curling family, um, it just seemed to click and, and, and having Sydney, you know, go through it all and see the machines work firsthand. Um, I mean, we're, the, the foundation is, uh, something very close to us now and meeting Sarah and the family at the Scotties and Musha last year, they, um, I mean, it's, try to do anything to support this foundation because i mean we've seen firsthand how how great it is and uh and it's saving people's lives and i'm testament to it and i know it's going to save other people's lives down the road so and help families out so um and then yeah so we decided to have a golf event and um generosity from friends and family uh, obviously it was covid uh time so we had to kind of have a reduced um sheet and everything but a little bit different of a year but uh, we're not going to stop we're going to keep going it's only going to get bigger and bigger um, and we do plan on having once COVID's maybe in our past we would love to have you know a curling event to and we're to raise some more money for the Savage Murders. That's awesome and, and where do you have this event? Uh, we had it in Warman at the Legends Golf Course. Nice right on. Yeah. Can you tell us more about the player Ali Jenkins collection? So we started that um, again with trying to keep her memory alive. And I know people wanted some something to honor her um, and we want to do it for a good cause. So we want to, uh, again, raise funds for a scholarship foundation. We have set up at the U of S in Allie's name and then also the Sanders Merler Foundation. Um, I was an expert in the clothing line. My friend Chase Porter, who's the owner of Player Athletics in Saskatoon, he uh, is obviously the guru at it. So um, he, when I presented it to him, he was... Um, arms wide open he was ready to to take this task on and uh, he helped out a lot and we've raised some good funds through it so that's awesome so how can people purchase something from the player, Ali Jenkins collection so you can go on the player uh, player athletics uh, website online um, it just closed I believe uh, we run like a month pre pre-sale um, so we usually do it. We're going to try to do it once a year and, and change up the clothing to summer, to winter clothing, to just change it up a bit. So every year. Right on. Keep it fresh. And what can viewers do to help babies like Sydney who are in NICUs right now? Honestly, I think just donate whatever you can. If you have some, you know, anything spare money around, just help donate. It's a good cause. We're big supporters and believers of it. Um, we lived it. We lived it. We see the machines. We see what they do. Um, these, they've got amazing doctors and nurses in these hospitals and, you know, giving them the right tools to do their job. They're going to, they're going to save a lot of lives. So I think this is 
definitely an amazing cause and call the number below. For sure. Well, Scott, I'd like to thank you and Sydney for joining us today. And I hope you know there are many people that are thinking of you often in the curling community and from the foundation. And we're here to help in any way that we can as well. Thanks so much. Baby is not breathing. Okay, so looks like we have a pretty weak air, so let's just stimulate and I'll just have a listen for the heart rate. That's right. So our heart rate is less than 100, so can we start PPV, please? That's perfect. We need an O2 sat probe. Okay, and we'll check again in 15 seconds. Okay. Just gonna check the heart rate again. So our heart rate's still less than 100, so let's start our Mr. Sofa maneuvers. So let's make sure our mask is well fitting. If we can get a neck roll, please, as well. Um, and then we can suction as well. So let's just put the neck roll underneath. Let's just give a little suction. Okay, we can take the mask off and just do a quick suction. Perfect. And then our mouth position is good. We can open the mouth and also we can increase our pressures of our uh, positive pressure. Perfect. I'm just going to have another little listen. Okay, so our heart rate is still less than 100, so let's prepare for intubation. Put the intubation equipment here. Okay, and our oxygen level looks okay at the moment. Okay, so let's go prepare for intubation. Okay. And suction ready. Perfect, okay. I'm in. Let's get the silent out. Okay, and we can attach and let's start giving PPV again. I'm just going to leave that tube with you to secure. It looks like we're getting good mist on the tube and good chest rise. I'm just going to have a listen to the heart rate. Okay, our heart rate is now above 100. Our O2 stats are stable. Our heart rate is good. We'll check a blood pressure. Good air entry on both sides. Okay. So let's get baby ready for transport to the NICU to the Indian Intensive Care Unit for further management, okay? okay. Great work, team. Hello, I'm Dr. Black, uh, General Pediatrician at Humber River Hospital. I'm also the Education Lead for the Pediatric Program here. Um, so we just did a resuscitation for a 30-week baby, and now we're actually sitting in the NICU pods at the moment. Um, and so a bit of a uh, brief background about uh, Humber River Hospital and Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. At, uh, for this past year, 2019, we had 4,000 deliveries, of which 341 required care in INICU. This year, it's anticipated to be 4,500 4, deliveries, of which 10% will need care in the NICU, and eventually will be up to 6,000 deliveries, meaning we'll have two times as many babies required in NICU as we currently do. In our current setup for the NICU, we have four pods, and each pod has four separate rooms, of which we're in one of the rooms right now. Um, and each uh, pod also has two nurses uh, with two nursing stations doing 24-7 support for the babies. So really what we, we'd like to do is try and open up a fifth pod in order to provide support in, in order for these increasing numbers of babies in the future. And this is where your kindness and uh, generosity and donations will come into, uh, into play. So in our pods, we can see there's a lot of benefits to having these individual pods. Um, first one mostly being privacy. So. Uh, privacy allows to facilitate such things as skin to skin for mother and baby that helps promote, promote development uh, and breastfeeding. Um, it also is important from an infection control point of view. So uh, especially in the era of COVID, this has become very important. We also have state-of-the-art omnibeds, which you can see here, uh, which provides an optimal environment for the growth and development of our premature babies and low birth weight babies. We have our, our uh, chairs, which convert into actual beds for parents to stay when they're staying with baby as well to see them. And there's transparent viewing cases so uh, parents can be close to their baby at all times and touch baby even through opening of the uh, windows. So babies can be touched to be close to parents at all times. And we have 24 seven monitors as well. So we can be very close on the babies to try and identify issues before they even become bigger issues. So at present we're level 2B and we'd actually like to get to a level 2C eventually. So 2B uh, is sort of, um, the terminology means that we're dealing with babies that are greater than 32 weeks gestation. So babies born two months early and greater than 1500 grams. Uh, a level 2C would be babies that are greater than 30 weeks gestation. So two and a half months early and greater than 1250 grams in terms of their birth weight. And this doesn't seem like a big difference, the two weeks, but when you're that young and that premature, it actually makes all the difference in terms of the acuity and the amount of uh, support that you'll need. 
So a, a great story I can think about that happened at Humber was uh, a case that I was involved in with a baby that was born. They were over 32 weeks, but they were actually only 750 grams. Uh, so this baby was actually the size of two cans of Coke. And I could carry the baby on one, on one palm of my hand as well. So when baby was born, we got our uh, multidisciplinary team involved right away. And we had our dietitians, neonatologists, respiratory therapists, NICU nurses, and pediatricians all involved to stabilize baby and transfer them to this to one of these pods into one of the rooms in which uh, they did very, very, very well actually. Uh, and so we were able to stabilize them and they were able to grow and develop here. And they thrived and were actually, actually discharged home earlier this year and are actually doing very well right now. So that was really a successful case for us here at Humber. And that's what we wanted, the level of care that we want to provide in the future. And being able to open up the fifth pod, we're hoping to be able to do that and be able to have a level 2C where we can care for babies similar to that in the future and moving forward. And again, that's where your generosity and support would come into play. And we really appreciate any, any support and donations that you can make in that regard. Thank you very much. That was such an interesting account from uh, Dr. Black at Humber, hey? That yeah, like it's, again, a great example of where donations go to and what, what equipment that's helping those tiny little babies uh, to help grow and get better. And also, big thanks to those frontline workers throughout the pandemic. Absolutely. They've just been, they've been our heroes. And another frontline worker, actually, there's a couple curlers who also work in that kind of an area. Carrie Anderson is a rehabilitation aide. Of course, she was last year's Scotties champion in Moose Jaw, representing Team Canada this year at the Scotties in Calgary. And um, she wanted to share some of her accounts. She has two twin girls. I'm sure if you guys were watching the Scotties and her win last year, you saw her go over and celebrate with them right away. Um, but this has been a difficult year for everybody but she's just going to explain how this has kind of put things into perspective for her uh, during a difficult year and the advice she has for younger curlers that's going to be our first video and then after that we're going to see another video that's right after carrie's video we're going to see a video from dr narvi who is a section head of neonatology he's the medical director of the child health transport team and the associate professor department of pediatrics and child health um, it's basically going to show how to, excuse me, it um, shows up a vein finder, which is $7,000 for one, and it helps babies receive less pokes, which obviously we see how tiny those little babies are. Uh, you wanna prevent them from hurting as much as they can. And of course, uh, it breaks down. If it breaks down, it needs replacement. And we're gonna talk more and see more about how that works. And uh, visual, you'll visualize the veins on the hands as well. Here's the videos. Hi, Carrie Anderson here, and today I'm hoping you can join me in supporting the Sandra Schmerler Foundation to help babies born too soon, too small, or too sick. Your donation will help support the purchase of life-saving equipment for hospitals and NICUs across Canada. Please call 1-866-210-6011 or donate online at Sandra Hi, Schmerler. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Narvi section head of neonatology at the Health Sciences Centre Women's Hospital NICU. I wanted to say a few words today about the generosity of the Sandra Schmerler Foundation. We have received many things from them over the years and that has helped so many babies here at the hospital. One of the things that we received was a vein finder. A vein finder is a special piece of equipment, looks like this costs about $7,000 per vein finder. And what that equipment is used for is to show the veins more clearly on our tiny little babies, where it can sometimes be quite difficult to see them. The reason that this is so important is because the um, better we are able to see the veins, the less pokes each baby has to receive. And Surely these babies, when they're in the NIC, receive a lot of pokes. So it makes a huge difference to families. And this is something that we always need. The vein finders are a great piece of equipment, but like anything, they may break down and they may need a replacement. Just to show you how they work, the vein finder as it powers up is able to visualize the veins on the hand, like so. You can see my veins show very nicely under the skin, and that allows our specialized nurses and doctors to be able to find these veins a little more easily. So I would encourage you to support the Sandra Schmerler Foundation and all the wonderful work that they do for the babies 
both here and across Canada. And thanks again to the Sandra Schmerler Foundation for all that you do. All right. Well, thanks again for those videos. Uh, we will have that interview with Carrie a little while later. Um, for now, though, again, just a reminder that if you are interested in donating to the Sandra Schmerler Foundation, again, our goal is $500,000. You can call 1-866-210-6011 or, of course, online is an option to donate as well at sandraschmerler.org. And, of course, um, your generosity is saving the lives of babies born too soon, too small or too sick. And you saw in that video that sometimes those babies' veins are so tiny and some of that equipment helps find those veins. And I want to just go back to last year and we can take a look at uh, some of the stats for last year. In 2020, we saw um, where your donations went and it helped uh, the foundation award a few grants to support NICUs across Canada. And not just a few, there's a long list, but I'm just going to name a few. We saw $10,000 uh, to the Red Deer Regional Hospital Centre in Red Deer, Alberta. We saw $30,000 to Regina General Hospital in Regina, Saskatchewan, and $40,000 to Jim Pattison Children's Hospital in Saskatoon. So that's just three of a long list of grants that we saw in 2020 where those donations went to help and again it's equipment like what we just saw that's helping some of those babies and no donation is too small or too large but we want to give a special shout out to a donation that just came in from ottawa fifteen hundred dollars from steve in ottawa thank you so much that's going to go so far and even right here in saskatchewan a um, million dollars worth of found funding from these telethons and donations have gone to help the Sandra Schmerler Foundation. So you can just see, you know, and also what Sabine was just saying, everything makes a difference. Like this goes so far. Our goal today, $500,000. Um, I know last time we checked in, we were at about $200,000. So let's keep those phones ringing, go on virtually, donate. Um, one, one, uh, guest we have coming up is Kathy Overton Clapton. We actually saw her. She's uh, one of the fifths for one of the teams right now at the Scotties. She was wearing one of these great masks on the bench. Um, one of the Scotties masks. <laughs> so shout out to Kathy for that. Um, she was, she's the board of directors um, on the board, pardon me, of directors um, and a spirit of Sandra mentor. And she was on the Ron Peterson show earlier this week. She talks about life in the bubble um, at this year's Scotties. We know it's so different. No fans, your family Families aren't allowed to be there with you. Um, but she also talks about the importance of keeping Sandra's legacy alive through the foundation and helping babies all across Canada. We're going to be talking about the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. We're going to be talking about the Sandra Schmuller Foundation telethon coming up on Sunday. All of these things with Kathy Overton, who joins us from the Calgary bubble, getting ready for the Scotties. And hey, Kathy, listen, I don't think we ever met but the connection here was my dad and your dad worked for the stars for years for craig and uh so that's how that all came up if you just tuned in late and wondered what the heck are they talking about my mom and dad for on the rod peterson show well i i do know craig but i didn't realize that your dad worked with with my dad so um now i'm sorry that i didn't share this with dad to watch today but i didn't think i was ever going to get a turn to get on the show because craig was like taking so much time and doesn't <laughs> so, stop talking. He's in the right profession, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> he and, isn't he? But uh, 26 years for my dad, and I think your dad was even longer, and I, I did meet your brother and your dad at various drafts. So anyways, Kathy, I wanted to bring that up before we delved into the the main topics here today, which is curling. I mean, you're the fifth on Team Manitoba. I don't know where to start. Do you want to start with the Sandwich Murder Foundation telephone and then go into the bubble or... You know, sure. you're the guest. Yeah, what would you like to great. talk about? Yeah. You go ahead. Well, we well, we, we do want to talk about the telethon. As, as you know, with the pandemic going on, we're unable to have the telethon at the Scotties live. Um, but we are doing it live Facebook, um, and it's going to be Sunday. And you can tune in and still make donations. And any, any donations made now will go towards the telethon total. Um, so that's happening Sunday. And um, we're hoping everyone can tune in there. You know, this, this is the 20th year, right? And uh, obviously, we're coming to you from Regina. So this is Sandra's uh, backyard, really, her home in a lot of ways. And we know her as the Queen of Hearts. What's this foundation meant to you? What, what did Sandra meant to you over the years? 
Yeah, well, I was fortunate enough to be um, competing on the ice with Sandra, a great competitor, um, great person. Um, she d did a lot for the sport, uh, a lot for women's curling. And um, I've been fortunate to be a part of the foundation. Oh, gosh, for I don't know when I started. I started with the scholarship program, and that's been going for nine years now. And then I became a board member. Um, so just, just how engaged every board member is and how... Uh, the money raised and the work that's put in goes to saving, um, uh, purchasing life-saving equipment for babies born too, too, uh, too early. And um, yeah, it's just uh, it's just a great foundation to be part of. Good. And to I carry wanted, on Sandra's legacy. Yeah, I wanted to ask what the uh, foundation is for and what the funds go towards. Uh, so you answered that. So it's Sunday on TSN. It's actually being produced out of this building. The goal is $500,000. And as we mentioned, 2020 is the 20th anniversary of the foundation. But it's funny how it falls right in the middle of the Scotties. Like draw one goes Friday night, Kathy. Uh, how, what's the scene? What's the scene for the first ever bubble for the Scotties? Well, the scene currently is just the hotel room. Um, everyone who's arriving, uh, arriving last night and today, we're in quarantine um, with temperature checks and wellness checks, um, more COVID testing. Um, we get to see the ice tomorrow for the first time and, um, you know, all goes well. Practice again on Friday and then the first draw Friday night. Uh, I think Curling Canada has done an amazing job. Uh, I can't imagine the work that's gone be behind to make this event run. Um, just with all the emails and things are changing um, daily, but it's uh, we're being updated all the time and it's uh, it's been great so far. Forgive me for asking. I know in Saskatchewan, the, the reps were appointed, so you'll be going up against Sherry Anderson, who you would know over the years, and on the men's side, Team Dunstone, who's got Manitoba roots in a way. How was the Manitoba rep selected by your association? So it was the past uh, last year's champion, um, which was Carrie Anderson's um, team, but they're defending champions. So it went to the runner up, which is uh, team Jennifer Jones. Um, team Peterson was selected uh, through the CTRS standings. Uh, there was three wild card spots. So um, they're going in as wild card number three. Um, New, new young team. Um, they've been together a couple of years, but this is their first Scotties. Um, so it's, uh, it's going to be a good one to experience. Well, my last one for you is uh, how are you guys feeling going into this? Because we've, again, we've had Braden Muscoey in here. We've had Matt Dunstone in here. They, you guys haven't thrown a lot of rocks <laughs> for a while. Yeah. So how are you feeling about that? Yeah, you know, I actually threw rocks. We were able to to sneak in some the Manitoba Open the club uh, to us on Saturday, and um, it's like riding a bike. Really, um, it didn't seem any different to get on the ice. Obviously, um, the girls hadn't been on the ice since November, so they did get some events in this year. Um, you know, they've had lots of Zoom calls and everything. So um, I think it's it's just being prepared mentally and. Um, to, to enjoy the experience. It's certainly going to be a different experience, not have any fans in the stands and, um, you know, not being able to, to go anywhere, just the hotel and the rink. So um, for sure, a different look for the Scotties, but I think everyone's just so excited that the event is running. Uh, people can watch on TV and uh, people can just get on the ice and curl. No doubt, a captive audience. Curling Zone is watching. They are saying, Kathy, we are all excited to get the big event underway. You know them well, and we've got a lot of viewers of Manitoba. David Ice writes in and says, Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. Kathy has seven gold, one silver, four bronze. Crazy unreal. Manitoba, great. So obviously you know that the buys and crowds behind you, I'm sure you'll feel it as you get ready to, you guys get ready to take to the ice there. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for the time. Good catching up, and good luck. We'll be watching. Thanks so much for having me, and thanks. You bet. Kathy Overton joining us from Team Manitoba, talking about the Sandwich Schmirler Telethon, uh, the Sandwich Schmirler Foundation Telethon going Sunday. And I'm calling this up because our Scotty's coverage is brought to you by Verge I'm Marilyn Bodo, two-time Canadian and world champion. Welcome to the first virtual Sandra Schmirler Foundation Telethon. And I know you're just as excited as I am to watch the curling on TV to cheer for your favorite team, your provincial champion. But now it's time to cheer for the Sanders Schmirler Foundation. This virtual stuff is so easy. All you have to do is pick up the phone, 
Call the number below your screen and make your donation. It's so important to see our small champions across this country turn into big champions just like Sandra. So call, donate today, and thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And that was an awesome message from Marilyn Badeau, of course, a two-time Scotties champion from Ontario. And before that, we heard from Kathy Overton Clapton, who um, has won Scotties before, but she's actually the alternate this year for the third wildcard team, Team Peterson. We saw her earlier today, I mentioned it, wearing one of these awesome masks. Um, and one thing that's really cool about the Sandra Schmirler Foundation and the Scotties relationship every year is that wherever the host city or wherever the Scotties is taking place, that host city gets $10,000 from the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. And this year it's going to the Calgary Health Foundation. Last year, of course, it was held in Moose Jaw and it went to a foundation there. Um, so just that relationship grows. But as Sabine's gonna mention, there's been so many cities across the country, hospitals, I think up to 60 hospitals in Canada that have had direct donations from the Sandra Schmirler from it foundation to their neonatal intensive care units. That's right, Claire. Uh, obviously, I mentioned just a few of those hospitals a little while ago, but uh, again, a long list. Uh, in 2020, um, you know, uh, the Sault Ste. Marie uh, hospital saw a grant of 21 th over $21,000. Humber River Hospital in North York, Ontario, a $25,000 grant. And the hospital in St. Thomas, Ontario saw a grant of over $28,000. And, you know, a number of cities across the, uh, across the country last year saw grants of $10,000. And we've been seeing throughout the morning into this afternoon of where your donations go, what your donations do uh, for some babies who are too small, too sick, uh, and need your help. And I think there's a great line that we've been reading in our scripts that I wanted to share was that um, the donations you're making today, you may not know the name of the child that you're helping, uh, but there are so many children and families who are going to go through life with a heart full knowing that you help them. And I think that's something that's super important to remember. So important. And I just want to also give a shout out. We're, we're having a lot of people follow along, obviously virtually, because we can't do it in person this year. But um, I'll give a shout out to Lance Hill. He says, our donation is in. I just mentioned a little while ago, there was a $1,500 donation from a group in Ottawa. So big thanks to them. And, um, you know, we heard a little earlier from Sarah and Jenna, Sandra Schmirler's daughters, about the energy that you feel during the telethon at the Scotties. Usually the, the phones are being um, answered in the concourse and you can walk around and see people answering the phones. We know that Team Saskatchewan, Sherry Anderson, they have the day off at the Scotties today and they're answering phones from the bubble in Calgary. So call in, but if you can't make the call or just want to do it virtually, um, visit the Facebook pages. Um, there's lots of ways to donate. You don't have to donate today. You can donate any day, but we are getting competitive. Sabine and I are talking about everybody wants $500,000. We want to set the goal, set the buyer higher than last year, than the $450 $50 that was raised in Moose Jaw and I think we've got an update. I think we might have an update. You're right, Claire. We've, I think the last update we saw in terms of totals was uh, just under $200,000. And right now we're seeing a total of... Woohoo! $238,000, 350. That's Hank amazing. Wasn't as excited this time around to, yeah. get, to get in it. But yeah, uh, amazing. Of course, we've said that the total that we're aiming for right uh, today is $500,000. And at the rate we're going, I'm very confident that we are going to make that total. But that's not gonna happen without your help, okay? Right. You guys, any donation helps. Any, it can be small, it can be large. Um, we talked earlier, you can make donations on a monthly basis and that's really great for the foundation because it's that steady source of income. We're almost halfway to our goal and we're not quite, I think we're almost halfway through the day too. Um, we've got this afternoon's draws coming up in about 20 minutes time. Of course, the feature game is PEI and Suzanne Burt against Lori St. George from Quebec. Um, and of course, TSN is going to be pumping up this telethon as well and the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. Um, but just keep using that hashtag. Yes. Um, champions start small. That's right. And of course, I mean, if you're online, if you're tweeting, if you're on Facebook, on Instagram, please make sure you're tagging with that hashtag and tagging Sandra Schmirler. And we would love to engage with you online. And if you happen to be online, you can also head on over to sandraschmirler.org to donate there, or you can call that number on your screen at 
210-6011. Earlier, Claire had mentioned that uh, the Calgary Health Foundation received the grant of $10,000, and I believe we're now going to hear from uh, some of those folks. Yep. video in just a little bit time and I want to remind you so we've talked a lot about social media we're giving some shout outs to the names we're seeing here we heard from the Johnson family we actually saw their story told a bit earlier here today we saw their note on Facebook but throughout the TSN game on that scroll on the bottom we will see your donations and your names come up so um, if you continue to donate right now you can get little your five seconds of fame on that scroller tape um, during the TSN broadcast um, we're gonna have a lot more people and guests throughout the day. Um, I know a little bit later, we, we've already heard from Jennifer Jones, we heard from Carrie Anderson. I believe we're going to hear um, a more extensive interview with Carrie Anderson a little bit later um, and we're going to have even more special guests coming up as we continue with you this evening. We started, Sabine, at 8.30, I believe, yep. and we're going all the way until 11 <laughs> o'clock tonight. So we are determined to hear from every single one of you uh, through social media or again through donations. If you're calling in, leave a message and hopefully we can hear or something uh, through hopefully someone answering the phones here in studio with us or just outside the studio. Um, I think you and I are, are, are a good combo or a good mix of being here. You have a lot of curling knowledge. I had a chance to actually volunteer for a very short time in the NICU. Uh, you did? Cuddling babies. <gasps> And that was your job, cuddling oh babies? You know, yeah, you got to keep them warm and you got to... And that skin-to-skin -skin contact yeah. is so important. I mean, we didn't do the skin-to-skin, -skin, but you still have a chance okay. to see just how tiny they are and, and you know, how much support and health, uh, you know, they need to get healthy. And again, just another example of where your donations are going. You've mentioned over and over again that no donation is too small. So we want to be able to collect as much as we can to get into uh, the goal that we're we're hoping to reach and I think we will get there yep I, I'm confident that we're gonna get there but just to know that there is uh, there is the other side that we're sharing with you but if you have an experience or if you have an opportunity to volunteer uh, in the NICU to you know be a baby cuddler it changes your thing. life yeah, and something else to mention also, Sabine and I are yes. wearing these great foundation pins. Um, we heard a little earlier from Anne Merklinger, or, or I believe, uh, I'm trying to remember if it was Cheryl yep. Bernard or Anne Merklinger, who Anne. was yep. part of the very first, okay, she was one of the first foundation pins. Um, we've heard from the pin people earlier today who have collected just thousands of pins um, and so we're hearing from just so many people in the curling community I know we also heard from Laura and Jeff Walker both curlers um, and they've got Liam with them in the bubble right now of course Laura was one of the feature matches this morning on TSN she's 3-0 with a baby in the bubble which is pretty amazing um, and another Scotty's um, Scotty's famous player that we're going to hear from right now is Carrie Anderson it's an extended interview of course she's the champion last year and she's representing Team Canada this year Hello everyone. Today I'd like to welcome 2020 Canadian Champion and Skip of Team Canada at the 2021 Scotties, Carrie Anderson. Thank you so much today for joining us, Carrie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. So Sandra's team took on the responsibility of being role models very seriously. Watching Sandra grow up as a young curler and as reigning Canadian champion. What is one piece of advice you would have for young curlers? Um, one piece of advice I would have is even if you fail, never give up um, because you eventually succeed if you keep working hard. That's something that I've kind of lived by. Um, I've had a lot of fails in my uh, curling career and I've just learned how to uh, put them aside and just keep working hard until I achieve those goals. Excellent advice. Sandra and her team also prioritize both family lives as well as being fierce competitors on the ice. How do you juggle being a high elite curler as well as a frontline worker and a mom of twin girls? 
It's definitely very challenging uh, to juggle all that, uh, being a wife, a mom, and being a frontline worker. It's hard, but I have so much support. I'm super lucky um, to be able to have my husband, my parents, my in-laws, aunties and uncles, anyone to help um, in any type of way um, for me to chase my dreams. And for me, um, being a frontline worker, it is also a challenge because I have to be super careful. Um, I have 80 residents who I take care of and, um, and I'm super lucky as well with my, my boss, my coworkers are always there to help me out and support me in any type of way. So I'm very lucky. Before you head to off to the Scotties, are you still working as a frontline worker? And what do you do? I'm a rehab assistant um, at Battle Home Foundation here in Gimli. Um, and yes, I'm still currently working. And uh, my residents are super excited to watch curling again. <laughs> I think everybody's ready to watch some live curling again. And, and it's very... <laughs> awesome that the curlers themselves are going as well as curling Canada through the lengths to put on the Scotties and Briar and some other yeah. champions championships this season. Yeah. Uh, we, um, I've had so many comments and, uh, people just saying, Oh, Carrie, we're so excited that they're able to put this on. So, um, they're going through everything possible to keep this safe for us. And how are you preparing for the Scotties this year? Probably a bit, uh, a little bit different than other years you prepared for the Scotties. Um, it's definitely much different. Uh, we have no ice here in uh, Manitoba, so I've actually been on the lake throwing rocks. Um, it's not ideal, but it works. At least you're getting in some slides um, and also just working out lots um, just to keep in shape. Yeah, I've. I've seen a few lake pictures and maybe we'll be able to show some lake pictures on this interview. It looks like it's a pretty nice lake. That you're <laughs> on. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's actually like my husband uh, fishes on. So <laughs> it's a little different. I've had a few people drive by on snowmobiles as I'm sliding out and they're like, we saw ice fishing, skating, but never a curling rink on Lake Winnipeg. So <laughs> that's awesome. I bet you never thought in the summertime you'd be preparing for the Scotties at the, your lake. No, not at all. That's not something that has crossed my mind <laughs> till this year. <laughs> With not being able to compete at the World Championships last year due to the pandemic, how were you able to keep things in perspective throughout this past year? Um, it's definitely, it was devastating, um, not being able to play at worlds, but, um, also being a frontline worker and seeing, um, everything that has been going around and happening, it's devastating. So for us, we, things were just put in perspective and everyone's health and safety was more important at that point. And, um, we respect everyone's choice and, um, we're just looking forward to uh, being able to put on that Canada jacket again and uh, being able to wear it and play with it. On. <laughs> Absolutely. For sure. And our last question today is, do your girls show an interest in the sport of curling? Oh, Chloe and Cameron love curling. They've actually been pretty upset uh, not being able to curl this year. We got on the ice early in October with them and, um, They've been always asking, Mom, why can't we go out and throw? And I explain to them what's happening. They're like, oh, okay. But I've had them on the ice since they were three years old. They are already, they're seven now, and they are throwing the rock all the way to the other end. And they absolutely love it. They enjoy sweeping a lot more than <laughs> just throwing. So who knows? what They might be sweepers instead of a skip, but <laughs> we'll see. Maybe you'll have, maybe you'll get to curl with your daughters and they can be your front end players. They can sweep your last stones to win the sky. Oh, that would, cool. <laughs> that would be a dream come true. And uh, hopefully one day they will want to play with their mom. I might not be cool enough, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Well, thanks for joining us today, Carrie, and best of luck in Calgary at the Scotties. Thanks for having me, Dustin. Hi, I'm Michelle Clafferton. I work at the Foothills Hospital. I'm a registered nurse. 
Um, for the NICU here, we're hoping that you would be able to donate to the Sandra Schmirler Foundation. Um, your donations will help um, our babies that are born too early, too small, or too sick. Thank you so much for everything. Hi, my name is Pauline Ravi. I'm the unit manager for the Foothills Medical Center Neonatal, neonatal Intensive Care Unit. Please join, Please join me in supporting the Sandra Schmeler Foundation and the Calgary Health Foundation to support babies and families in the NICU. Your support and donation will go on to help purchase life-saving equipment for hospitals and NICUs across Canada. Thank you for your support. Hi, I'm Amber Baird. I'm a registered nurse in the neonatal intensive care at the Foothills Medical Center. And we are hoping that you can donate for life-saving equipment for our sick and critically ill babies here. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Hey, I'm Dr. Abhay Lora. I'm a staff neonatologist at the Foothills Medical Center and ICU. I'm hoping you can join me in supporting the Sandra Schimbrel Foundation and the Calgary Health Foundation to help babies born too soon too small or too sick. Your donation will help support the purchase of life-saving equipment for hospital neonatal intensive care unit. Please call for donation on 1-866-210-6011 or donate online at sandrasimral.org. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Jennifer and I'm a nurse practitioner here at the Foothills Medical Center NICU. Today here, I'm here asking for your support for the Sandra Schmerler Foundation and the Calgary Health Foundation. Your donations go a long way to support our little babies and their families here at the NICU and we appreciate every single one. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Rena. I'm the flow coordinator for the NICU here at the Foothills Hospital. I would like you to help us support through the Sandra Schmuller Foundation, through your donations to help us support the very sick preterm infant that we receive from all of Southern Alberta. Thank you. Hi, I'm Danny Smith. I'm the clinical project manager at the Foothills Medical Center, NICU. I'm hoping you can join me in supporting the Sandra Schmerler Foundation and the Calgary Health Foundation in helping our babies that are born too soon, too sick, and too small. They really need your help. Your support and um, donations today will really help with life-saving equipment that will go to hospitals and NICUs across Canada. Please support us today. Thank you so much. We're back! <laughs> We're coming to a close for our part of the telethon, but that doesn't mean that curling is ending today. Oh no, we've got no. some big draws coming up. I like the Scotties is so exciting, especially in this climate with so few live sports happening. And so um, I think the feature draw this afternoon is Suzanne Burt and PEI against Quebec's Laurie St. George. Um, so that'll be an exciting matchup. And then we'll have another draw this evening. So it's, it's triple Sunday, um, but of course, throughout these draws today, there's gonna be a ticker at the bottom of the TSN curling um, broadcast which shows some of the donations coming in for the Sandra Schmerler Foundation. So get your donations in. You can see your name on that broadcast. Maybe you even get a shout out from Vic Router himself. How ideal would that be, hey? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, mentioning that you'll be seeing the names across TSN, just because we are not speaking or sharing stories uh, with you doesn't mean that we're not taking donations. So you can continue to call the number on your screen at 1-866-210-6011, or you can head on over to sandrashmerler.org to make your donations online and after this draw you know we'll be back for another uh, another chat with a lot of stories and I, I also want to give a shout out to Sharon Housen um, she says we make donations throughout the year this is by the way on our Facebook feed we're seeing messages come in they make donations throughout the year and they're legacy donors and they're now adding a monthly donation thank you so much Sharon and the foundation has said those monthly donations are so integral because they allow them to have that steady stream of revenue so that's an option that you can also do 
Today, what are we trying to raise? We're trying to raise $500,000 and we are just under halfway there. Yeah, and we're almost, we're kind of halfway there in our programming with the telethon too, right. virtually. So we're on pace, but keep ringing the phones, um, keep going on it virtually, making those donations. Every amount helps. That's right. We will be back just around 5.30 Central Time with a lot uh, lined up for the final, uh, final connection with you guys. Uh, and that includes some media personalities. Who else do we have lined up? Well, we've got Jen Becker, who was a former curler with Sandra Schmirler. She's one of our VIP guests. And um, like you mentioned, we've got some media personalities. Honestly, all of the stories are great. Hearing from NICU patients, from, hearing from parents, it's all amazing. But right now, Sabine, we're gonna have to go back to TSN curling for the afternoon draw at the Scotties in Calgary. See you soon.